Dr. Green. Hi. Hi. So Mr. Rogers is outside in the waiting room okay. and you know they're here to get the results from the test that he had last week. Right, yes. Yeah. Okay. So I think uh, I think my sense is from the last visit, he kind of knows what's going on and, and remind me again, that what, what were the results? Is it good news or not so good news? Not so great news. It does look like his cancer has spread and it's probably worsening at this point. So we may have a tough discussion today. Okay. I'm wondering how his daughter's going to do. She's really been with him through thick and yeah. thin and, and I'm not sure if she's necessarily ready to hear this, but um, but she's been very supportive. So. Right. Do the best we can. Yeah, today. yeah. Let me put the chairs together so that way we okay. can make sure we've got Great. this space arranged. And remind me again: Is he in a wheelchair? He's not. We he is. Chair. He's gotten really weak, so yeah, he's been kind of trying to conserve his energy. So I think she'll bring bring okay. him into the wheelchair because okay. um, so that's what he's in right now. Space. Let me grab a box of Kleenex because I know that sometimes it's got to come as a shock. So okay. So I'm gonna go and then bring them back here. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Dr. Green, here's the Roger family. Hi. Hi, Anna. Hi, Hello. Mr. Rogers. It's nice to see you again. Just yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. Sorry about the tight quarters. Yeah. You okay right here? Yeah. Space is always a commodity in the hospital, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. So how are things going at home? Okay, he's just a little weak. Um, I think it's an infection, so that's why we're here um, to see what's going on, because he did do some tests that you ordered. So. That's right, last week. And Mr. Rogers, how have you been feeling? Just tired. Yeah. Getting around, that was good. And I noticed on your chart that it also looked like you've been losing a little weight as well. How's your appetite been? Um, it's been better in the past, not so much. Yeah, not so much right now. So. Okay. What's your sense of how things are going, um, just in general? Uh, <clears throat> well, I'm kind of, I'm suspecting something. Um, I definitely could feel, I feel different. Not as much energy in that anymore, so I don't know. That's what I'm here to find out. So, how would you like me to tell you about the results of your tests? I can certainly give you details, or I can sort of give you sort of more general information. It's up to you. you whatever makes us understand it better. Okay. I think general. Yeah, idea. general. Okay. So, um, I'm I'm very sorry. I, I am the bearer of bad news today. It does look like from your CT scan in your labs that the cancer has come back and it's actually, um, unfortunately, it has progressed. Um, Is there so anything that we could, that we could keep doing or it's a great treatment? It's a great question. Um, you know, I, I've, we've looked at kind of all the options and he was very successful after the last round of chemo and radiation and you had a really, it sounds like a really great year at home in Livermore and um, you know I think we're all really grateful that, that, that for that time that you've had together. Yeah. Um, at this point it, I think we may be at a, a, a turning point if you will um, where comfort might be more of the primary goal. Um, we can certainly look at palliative options but um, you know I, I think given where your cancer is at at this point I don't, I think the options are somewhat limited in scope, but I think your comfort might be our primary goal, if that sounds like it's something that is okay with you. Let me ask the question, because I know sometimes yeah. we use terms that yeah, I'm not sorry. familiar with. So, are you familiar with what palliative means? Um, Let me know. Not so much. I know there's hospice, there's palliative, so. Right. Pa palliative care is usually um, a, a team or um, uh, a team that works in coordination with your primary team to provide symptom management. Um, it sounds like you've had a little bit more pain uh, since you've been at home, you're a little weaker and your appetite hasn't been as good. And um, certainly we can collaborate with the palliative care team to maybe set you up for a little bit more success and comfort at home. I know you'd said earlier that, that you had a sense that, that something was going on. Does, does the news come as a shock then? 
I could say I was suspecting something. Um, Severity-wise, or how bad it was, no, but I could feel something was not the way it once was. So I, could, I had an idea, I just wasn't sure how bad. Yeah. Wish things were different. Yeah. We've gotten to know you over the past couple of years in our clinic, and yeah, he's are been hard. really strong. You know, he had a good. He did the chemo, he did the radiation, mm -hmm. and he pulled through it. And he had got the infection, mm -hmm. and he did that, and it was everything was good to me. I feel like he could still do something. I don't. Did you? Are these the results? Yes. This is his these are the results. Labs and his information. Correct. So unfortunately, you know, they, this wasn't an infection. Um, this is actually very concretely the spread and progression of his lung cancer. Um, so I, I realize that this is really hard to digest. Um, and certainly we can talk further uh, about, you know, providing more comfort for him home, but I understand that this can be really hard for you because you've been so wonderful in caring for him during the last year, in the last many years, in fact. Um, and it sounds like, you know, you're such a close family, it's really wonderful. Yeah, that's all I have. Sometimes um, when families and veterans get this news, one of the questions that they often wonder is how much time. Is that something that you're curious about? I'd say yes and no. I don't really want to know, but at the same time, no, I'd say no, I don't want to know. Because I know sometimes that can impact how people plan, and so at least what I can do is share with you what are some of the resources that are available here. Um, if, if you guys have a little bit of time and are interested in hearing some of that, just, just to plant the seed, not that any decisions need to be made now, um, and to answer any further questions that you cool. have. Right. I think we could get an idea, and we could think about it. And Michelle is a wonderful resource, um, so I would definitely encourage you to talk with her about like, what options are available and, and how we might continue to be of support to you. Okay, I'm going to excuse myself. I'm sorry, um, as usual, the hospital's busy. <laughs> um, but it was, I'm, you know, I'm sorry to for the news today. But you know, I hope we can continue to collaborate with you on, on making sure that everything goes well at home. Thanks for your time today. Thanks. You know, sometimes you get a lot of information during these conversations, and so I just want to make sure that even though Dr. Green had to leave, if other questions come up, that you can definitely reach out. I can forward those to her. You can call in. Um, that, that we definitely want to make sure that we answer your questions. So one of the things that you can do is even just as they come up in the next several days, um, write stuff down so that when you follow up, we can address them. So initial impressions. This is a really hard conversation. Can he still keep staying with me? Absolutely. So I mean I think you know what you're seeing right now you know, from from a couple months ago where you were still able to do your mile long walk to now just kind of really start to feel the impact. This is part of the normal trajectory with people who have advanced cancer that we can't fix or that we can't cure. And so what the conversation then switches to at this point are, what are the things that are most important to you? And it sounds like being at home is important, kind of having good quality, and that's however you define that is important. And what then can we do to bring in support to help you meet those goals at this time in your life? And so I just wanted to let you know within the hospital here, we do have a palliative care team. They often work with us. Um, we can try maybe on your next visit to the oncology clinic to have someone come and meet you just so you know who, who they are and if other questions come up that they can, they can answer. That would be a good time for that. And then in the home setting, for people who have your diagnosis um, and for people who are focusing then on really looking at comfort and quality of life, um, there is hospice that's appropriate and that they can come in and help support you in being at the home. Um, and that's not just to to treat your symptoms, but also to provide support to both you and your family. And so wanted to plant those seeds if these are the things that are available. Um, and if next week when you come in for your follow-up appointment and kind of weekly check-in, you have more questions or if you want us to set up some informational visits, we can absolutely do that. So 
again, no, no rush on any decisions today. I just want to make sure that I'm giving you um, information that's relevant at this point. Yeah. It's a lot to take in right now. So. It is. I think just moving forward and going through our options, the first time we went through, when the cancer did react, mm -hmm. and, you know, there was some progress, and I was able to get back to walking a mile. And yeah. Then, I know it was, for me, it was, it was not an easy road, but I know that it does take a toll on my family mm -hmm. and my support. Mm -hmm. It's just really hard. Yeah. I, I don't know what to do. And it, my girls love him. They're really close to him, and they're going to be the ones more affected. Yeah. And I really want him to stay with me. Yeah. yeah. And then we'll discuss later. Yeah, well, I think then um, what I would say is let's let's touch base next week again because I think pulling in the resources that then can help you stay at home and provide support both to you and to your family and your girls um, are things that are available out there. And so we can talk more about what that looks like and what the next steps would be when you come back in. That sound reasonable like a plan. I think it's something we could consider, but I just want to make sure I'm not my daughter and my grandchildren through additional additional burden and, yeah. you know. Yeah, and that's enough that will be evolving. I mean I think one of the things that we do have luckily at our VA is an inpatient hospice unit so that you may never need it and never want to use it, but it is here in case that you do and so that we partner very well with the community agencies and, and having that as an option. So um, you know I think Again, these are not things that you decide on one path and that's the only path. This is an evolving conversation, just like it was when you were first diagnosed with your cancer and you had to think about what treatments you wanted to do. So um, throughout all of this, you know, our team, both oncology and the whole VA, will be here with you um, to support you in this time in your lives. So I want to make sure you have our social worker phone number for oncology. You know, you've, you've known her over the years, but she is a great point of contact as questions come up in between now and your next visit. Um, and, you know, you'll, you'll see Dr. Green again, and if anything comes up in between, please call our social worker so that we can get your answers, get you answers. Okay. All right. I'll give you some time here, you know, just if you have discussions that you want to have, and I'll check in before you leave just to make sure that you know, we answer everything that we can today.